In order to gain maximum returns from rice harvests, it is important to understand the different quality traits and how they are affected. Paddy or unhasked rice has a set of distinguishing qualities that can be measured to help prevent losses from occurring or continuing. In this video, we will show you what determines paddy quality and teach you how to measure each of its physical quality traits. Paddy or unhasked rice quality is influenced by a combination of varietal and environmental conditions, which occur during crop production practices, soil conditions, harvesting, and post-harvest practices. Some varietal properties include the color of the grain, the shape, size. Some important environmental properties determining paddy quality are moisture content, grain purity, physical, and pest damage. Seven interrelated features determine the quality of paddy. These are moisture content of paddy, purity degree, varietal purity, grain dimensions, cracked grains, immature grains, and damaged grains. Now let's look closely at each characteristic. Moisture content of paddy or the weight of water remaining in the paddy is at its optimum milling potential at 14% moisture content. Grains with high moisture content are too soft to withstand hauling pressure without excessive damage. High moisture grains also deteriorate quickly in storage. Grain that is too dry becomes brittle and has greater breakage during processing. And if you sell overdried grain, you get less profit due to excessive weight loss. Purity is related to the presence of material other than paddy and includes chaff, stones, weed seeds, soil, rice, straw, and stalks. Foreign matter in the paddy increases drying cost, reduces the milling recovery, the quality of rice, and increases the wear and tear on the milling equipment. A mixture of varieties causes difficulties during milling and usually results in reduced capacity, excessive breakage, lower milled rice recovery, and reduced head rice. The grain size and shape concerning the length-width ratio is a very distinct way to assess varietal property. In the rice mill, long slender grains normally have greater breakage than short, bold grains and consequently have lower mill rice recovery. Overexposure of mature paddy to fluctuating temperature and moisture conditions leads to development of fissures and cracks in individual kernels. Cracks in the kernel result in reduced milling recovery and head rice yields. The amount of immature paddy grains in a sample has a major effect on head rice yield and quality. The immature rice kernels are very slender and chalky and are easily broken during milling. Paddy deteriorates through biochemical changes in the grain resulting in the development of off odors and changes in the physical appearance and color of the grain. These types of damage are caused from water, insects, and heat exposure. Storing wet paddy or exposing dry paddy to wet environmental conditions can cause yellowing.
Yellowing is a result of a combination of microbiological and chemical activity that overheats the grain similar to a milled form of parboiling. Black spots around the germ end of the brown rice kernel are caused by the microorganisms or fungi and are increased by unfavorable weather or storage conditions. In the process of milling, these black spots are only partly removed which consequently increases the presence of damage or unattractive grains. When measuring the physical quality of paddy, there are six features to examine. Cracked grains, grain dimensions, immature grains, dockage, 1000 seed weight, and the moisture content. Let's explore how to measure each paddy quality trait in detail. Paddy will be classified based on International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, for paddy. This international standard lays down the minimum specifications for husked rice. <music> Using the paddy crack detector, Count the number of cracked grains in a 100 grain sample, then compute the percentage of cracked grains using this equation. The number of cracked grains divided by 100 grains. Then multiply this by 100 to get your percentage. <music> to obtain the average length and width of the paddy grains, Use a vernier caliper or photographic enlarger. Collect 20 paddy samples at random from each replicate and measure the dimensions. To obtain the paddy shape, the following equation will be used. The average paddy length in millimeters divided by the average paddy width in millimeters. First, select a 25 gram grain sample. Then select, segregate, and weigh the immature grains in the sample. Finally, calculate the percentage of immature grains in the sample using the formula. The weight of the immature grains divided by the total weight of the samples and multiply this by 100. Remove light foreign matter, stones, weed, and seeds from a 100 gram sample. Next, obtain the total weight and then compute the dockage percentage as follows. Weight of the dockage from sample divided by the total weight of the sample and multiply this by 100. <music> Count and weigh 1000 grains. This will give you the 1,000 seed weight. There are two methods to measure moisture content, the oven method and the moisture tester. To measure moisture content using the oven method, use a temperature-controlled oven. First, set the oven to 130 degrees centigrade. Make sure the temperature is not higher than specified because chemical changes will occur within the grain which can cause additional weight loss. Step 2. Weigh three paddy samples and place them inside the oven. Step 3. Measure the final weight of the samples after 16 hours. Step 4. Compute the moisture content wet basis using this equation. Moisture content wet basis equals the initial weight of the paddy minus the final weight of the paddy. Divide this by the initial weight of the paddy and then multiply the result by 100 to get the moisture content wet basis for those samples. Step 5. Compute the average moisture content of the three samples by adding the equated moisture content of each sample together and dividing it by 3.
To use a quick moisture meter, first read the operating instructions. Then check that the batteries are still good. Next, turn on the power and make sure the machine is set for paddy or rough rice. Then, fill the tray or bowl of the moisture tester with the paddy sample. Turn or press the knob until the moisture reading is displayed. It may take a little force, but make sure you turn the knob all the way as described in your manual, or you will get a wrong reading. Test at least three samples of the grain for an accurate moisture content reading. Those are the fundamentals of determining and measuring potty quality. Be sure to follow each step carefully when measuring the characteristics and remember, better quality grain equals better market value.